Okay, folks, it's the top of the hour. You're listening to Tales from the Golden Road on the Grateful Dead channel. My name is David Gans. My co-host, Gary Lambert, is taking the day off to um, fight a cold. I'm handling all this stuff without him. And right now I want to bring another author on the air. Uh, his name is Howard Weiner, or is it Weiner? Weiner. Weiner. I know people who, who spell it the same way and pronounce it either way. Weiner, uh, Howard Weiner's book is called Tangled Up in Tunes. Ballad of a Dylan Head, and I'll, um, although I apologize to Don McAllister for, for not having read any of his book, I have read at least a part of your book, Howard, and I've really been enjoying it. It's a pretty, um, uh, it's it's the tale of a lot of guys in our age group, I think, who um, fell in love with this music, Bob Dylan and the Grateful Dead and stuff, and built our lives around it. So it's great to have you on. Congratulations on the publication. Why don't you tell us about your book? Hey, David. Thanks so much for having me on, and uh, Gary, best wishes, get get well quick. Um, basically, uh, Tangle Up the Tunes, Ballad of the Dylan, Dylan Head is my, my tales from the Golden Road. It's about, <laughs> right on. It, it's definitely, I didn't want to, the, t- the title was already taken, so um, I came up with something else, Tangle Up the Tunes, but um, it's about living the life I love and following my musical passion, uh, and, and that has led me to uh, 152 Grateful Dead shows, 51 JGB shows, and about 120 Dylan shows. And when you see something, you know, people that historic, like Dylan and Garcia, you should write about it. Everybody out there who's seen a couple hundred Dead shows gets to writing about it because it's, it's amazing American history. It's incredible stuff. And hey, I'm looking forward to reading Don's book because um, I actually have a character in my book, a real character. His name is E. All right, cool. <laughs> hey, but, um, yeah, my, my book, um, I grew up in Nanuet, New York, you know, just a typical suburban town. And basically, I had no life for about 16 years. I was just musically obsessed. And then one day, my friend Doug comes home from a uh, sleepaway camp, and he's like, I'm a deadhead. Jerry Garcia is God. And I, I just I had no idea what he was talking about. I was, like, laughing. You know, I loved Clapton and Hendrix, and I, I, didn't, I didn't understand where he was coming from. But after a couple of epiphanies, you know, I listened to Europe 72, and I learned all about Americana from listening to that, Dick Penn with the blues, and Hank Williams, you win again. It, it was amazing. It blew me away. But the thing that really did it was English Town, my first bootleg. Man, hearing that tape, the eyes of the world, the half-step, I was like, yes, Jerry Garcia is the supreme musical sage. <laughs> and, and more, and more. He was, you know, just blown away by that. Hey, and next thing you know, my life takes a quantum leap. All of a sudden, I'm in Saratoga, I'm in Alpine Valley, I'm in Hampton, I'm in Rochester, Worcester, Ventura, Philly, Harrisburg, and all of a sudden, I'm like in the middle of getting tapes and telling people about shows, and kind of it made meaning for my life. It was an incredible thing, especially during the Reagan years, and I know this is not the show to talk about politics, so I'll step out of that. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that on my account. <laughs> Hey, no, de- definitely, definitely uh, great that great that Obama won. You know, music's my politics. That's why I voted for Obama. Thank you. That's great. Um, uh, tell people where they can get hold of the book, and then I want you to tell us more about it. And do you have a little piece you could read for us? Sure, sure, definitely. I, I have right, a, well, a piece, t- and uh, you get get the book at www.tangleupandtunes.com. It's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. But actually, I, I lowered the price a couple of bucks for Tales for Other Golden, Golden Road listeners today. So, uh, yeah, check out my website. I got videos there. It's tangleupandtunes.com. Uh, all kinds of merchandise, uh, crazy things over there, social media, the whole thing. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I was thinking I'd read a piece from my first road trip at the Philly Spectrum, uh, April 6, 1982. Uh, it, it was such an, an amazing night. And, um, you know, there was, there was a blizzard. You know, once again, I live in Nanua, New York, and I woke up, and there was a foot and a half of snow on the ground on April 6, 82, out of nowhere. But uh, we went to the show. We made it through the blizzard. We got to Philly, and it was such an amazing scene. The band opens up with cold rain and snow. And it was one of those nights that just had the anticipation, anticipation building the, all the way through. Second set, you got a shakedown, and Brent and Jerry are trading leads, and the whole jam explodes. Sailor Saint, get the Terrapin, and something monumental is going to happen, something colossal. And that's where I'll jump into my book and read a little piece. April 6, 82, Philly Spectrum. The post-drum space sounded like ravens gone mad and seagulls squawking. Deadheads drifted in from the hallways and wiggled to their seats, some squatting, some standing. A brother in front of us passed back a hash pipe. 
Is there any substance with a more exotic scent than hash? I took a long, luxurious hit. A sensation of weightlessness seized me. Yet thanks to another blast of blow, I felt like juggling bowling balls. <laughs> Optimism oozed through my pores. I sought the holy grail. Morning dew. The dead only played the dew when they had it going on. A cyclone of psychedelic sound was unleashed in the jam between trucking and the other one. I hollered in yodel approval. The band was ripping. Now I had mental telepathy working. The do, Jerry. For the love of God, please play the do. We're saying, Cowboy Neal at the wheel of bus to Neverland. Come in, come in, come in around, coming around, come in around, coming around. A fraction second of silence framed the moment. Jerry struck the do chord. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> I grabbed Scott, by the way, Z. I grabbed Scott by the waist and proudly hoisted him over my head like he was a Stanley Cup trophy. A young lady standing in front of me let out two primal, erotic screams. Pandemonium in Philly. Folks were crying, hugging, kissing, and squeezing each other. And as I'm going through this, I, oh, there it is. I'm looking for the, for the next page. Oh, here we go. Jerry's solitary voice submerged. Walk me out in the morning dew, my honey. Walk me out in the morning dew today. The tempo was dirge-like, almost still. Jerry appeared egoless, just standing there in a black t-shirt and jeans. He poured his soul into each syllable, seemingly stopping time, freezing the moment, connecting with the raw emotion of the masses. I thought I heard a baby cry this morning. I thought I heard a baby cry today. Jerry compressed the screaming tirade of notes into his solo, punctuated by a resounding blast from Phil's bass. Jerry's solitary voice returned, more solemn than before, repetitiously weeping, I guess it doesn't matter anyway. Silence filled the arena, deadheads prepared for takeoff. Garcia began his sermon deliberately, plucking strings with surgeon-like precision. His immobile nobility, his bearded mug intense, his brain boiling. Each note radiating from his fret four did so with intimacy. Each note was crucial. The band followed in a trance, adding layers and waves of oral sensation. As the foundation solidified, the velocity and volume of Jerry's playing spiraled until the steam but valve blew. Each musician was engaged in this spectacular display. They scaled the pyramid of transcendence together. Jerry mournfully cried, I guess it doesn't matter anyway. Overwhelmed by the do, I didn't care what was next. I let out a lunatic's laugh as the band burst into sugar magnolia. Sweat poured as deadheads bounced off the spectrum floor like it was a trampoline. This was the exclamation point for a historic set. The boys delivered my wish list. Shakedown, Terrapin, Morning Dew, Sugar Mag. It was the only time in Grateful Dead history that those four songs appeared together in the same show. Just once in 2,314 concerts. Was it a coincidence or was my presence part of the equation? <laughs> Much great, like the man who goes to his favorite pub week after week and roots for his favorite football team and wears the same dingy sweatshirt and sits in the same wobbly stool and orders the same pint of beer from the same bartender until his team wins the Super Bowl or flops and he realizes the folly of his ways. I believed my presence in Philly inspired the band. Amen. Oh, that's great, man. How, how many of us have had that experience of getting exactly what we needed that day and wondering, you know, if our thought influenced it. You know what I mean? There's the, there's definitely a feeling of connectedness, even though it sort of seems impossible that it, it could be that way. You got what you wanted, and there might be a reason for that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if the dead go into a studio and they play Shakedown, Sailor, Saint, Terrapin, and there's an audience there, they're probably not going for drums, truck, and other one do. It's it's definitely it's a give and take. It's definitely a communal experience where the crowd takes part in it. And if there's enough people who are really into it, somehow the energy transforms to the band, and it goes back and forth. So I think we all definitely have a part of it, uh, a part in it. And, you know, it's, it's after, after a night like that, it's, you have to go back for more, you know, because you do feel like you're part of it. Somehow, you know, you're there and these amazing things happen and you need to go again because <laughs> in a very small way you made it happen. That's a great feeling, isn't it? Uh, it, it, it was incredible, you know. So, I, I mean, that was my, fir my first road trip. 
I mean, I could have changed my name that day. I was I was a different person. My 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 total life changed like after that show. Uh, incredible. I I knew a college student many many years ago who said that that was his characterization of thing that you you went into every Grateful Dead concert knowing you could come out of it a different person. Yeah, <laughs> happened a few times and. Um, yeah, it's such such an amazing amazing experience, and that, that that's why you keep going back. I yeah, mean, absolutely. being part of the community, and there's there's so many advantages to it, but also the the historical thing where you know you're, you're following Jerry Garcia, the greatest musician ever. And I, I wasn't a writer back then, but I knew I was kind of cataloging these things because I knew what was happening was historic and you know just uh, amazing. And thank God, I, you know. <laughs> We're around in 2012. I wrote a book. There's tales from the Golden Road, and everybody's still so into it. What happened so many years ago? Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? And the music lives on. And yeah, it's amazing. We got a 24/7 channel to keep that music pumping out and turning new people onto it. One of the great things about this program is we hear from young fans who couldn't possibly have seen the Grateful Dead because they were in diapers when Jerry died, or not even born yet. So yeah, the music is immortal. We figured that out, and I'm so thrilled that we get to keep telling our story. I'm talking with Howard Weiner, and his story is called Tangled Up in Tunes, Ballad of a Dylan Head. And as you just heard from the excerpt, it's a great story of one man's experience going to dead shows and Dylan shows. And um, I recommend it. I haven't read the whole thing through yet, but I've read about half of it and thoroughly enjoyed it. And you can find out more about it at tangledupintunes.com. Once again, I posted a link to it on the Tales from the Golden Road Facebook page, so you can just click through right there and find a copy of the book online. Howard, thanks for being with us. Hey, David, David thank you so much for having me on. And by the way, I loved seeing you at Bear's Picnic. Uh, that, that day at Bear's Picnic was amazing. Got to see you for the first time, and then there was JGB Band, and Mickey yeah. was fantastic, and Seven Walkers. That was such a great day and um, amazing. So anytime David Gans is in town, go see him. Hey, thanks. I appreciate your kind words, and it was great to meet you that day. Well, hopefully I'll see you again at another show in the future. Definitely. No doubt, David. Thanks a lot. All right. Be well. Thank you, Howard. Hey, I